Hello YouTube, this is XXXMan360 here, and today I have a tutorial for you all regarding something that's been commonly asked on the channel. What is this tutorial about? It's how to use the sprite dat generator from AB360. And you've come to the right place considering I am the one who wrote it, so I can give you all there is to know about how to use it. In this tutorial, I'll try to keep things simple for like a common use you might find with the sprite dat generator, and if you want to go for more advanced things, you could check out the help tutorials, but really you need that problem-solving mindset to get the most out of it. Anyways, so um, you're going to need to have the sprite dat generator downloaded, and if you haven't already, um, you can go to the AV360 Discord server and go to the downloads page to get it from there. Uh, you'll also need the .NET Core 64-bit edition, as that's what this program is built on, and you will need it to be able to run it. Um, I'm going to be using Angry Birds 1.6.3 for this tutorial to keep things a bit more uh, on the modern side because it involves encryption and decryption rather than just using plain 1.0.0. You can still do this with 1.0.0. Um, it's just that I'd like to give a bit more of a modern insight. Um, in that case, if you are using 1.6.3, I'd make sure you have the AB360 LUA Manager, which you can also find in the AB360 Discord, but you'll all need the 32-bit version of .NET Core installed as well, so get both of them. Anyways, uh, to start, when you open up your Sprite.Generator archive and you extract it, you'll see HD or SD. Now, depending on your monitor, if you have a large screen resolution that is 1080p or larger, I'd go for HD. But if it's smaller than that, choose SD. Otherwise, you will not be able to use HD. But since I have a 1080p monitor, I can safely use HD. So we're going to open up the Sprite Dad Generator. And the Sprite Dad Generator comes with an example picture. Um, and so that's what I'll be using for the sake of this tutorial. And what, we, what uh, are we going to be using? Well, what we are going to be trying to implement is a custom bird, pig, a block, and a button. Those are very basic things, but they will be helpful in the long run if you're trying to do a custom theme pack or texture pack for Angry Birds, or you're just trying to code your own buttons and you need the sprites for them. The way you select your sprite is you just simply click on it and you drag the square until it's the exact size and pixels of your original sprite. I'm going to call this one xxxman360 bird for simplicity since that's my OC. Uh, okay, so here we are in the choose an origin point section. Now, um, for all these sprites, we're going to choose center. Now, for some other sprites, they'll use a custom origin point or a different one altogether. And basically, what the origin point is, it's the point where when you specify the X and Y coordinates, what part of that sprite goes to it. If you choose the center, then if, if you give coordinates to a sprite, the center point will be on those coordinates. So if you choose, or if you choose top left, then the top left part will go to those coordinates. And that's pretty much how origin points work. So I'm going to choose center, since this is a bird. And then we're going to do the same with our pig. If you're uh, wondering what other cases you need a different origin point for, uh, I'd recommend going through the help. They can tell you which origin points you need in order to properly load your sprite. I'm going to call this uh, blue pig. Center, that one's added. A button. Now I'd like to uh, do a no actually, you know, like show this in game. I'm gonna call it uh, menu play en because that's what the Angry Birds calls their play button. And in order to actually have it be used, I'll have to remove the regular play button from the list of sprites. And then finally we got our question block, so let me just get that in there. Question block. Commit selection. Yes, and center. Okay, so now we have, oops, yeah. Don't, uh, oh, yeah, you see this message right here? 
don't zoom out more than 100% unless you're just working on one sprite because you will mess up your nice little selections right here. Anyway, so to create our jet, we just create, we're going to click generate and I'm going to go to Angry Birds 1.6.3 here. Data images PC build, which is what the PC versions use, and I'm just going to call it example dat dot dat. Okay, so when you see this message, make sure you don't rename your PNG, otherwise you'll break the entire dat because the dat itself contains the name of the PNG file. Okay, so now we have our dat generated, and also we are going to need to copy the image in, otherwise we won't be able to load it. Okay, so now that's there, we need to be able to import it. Now, what we do for that is we go to our scripts folder, and we see this file called loadlist.lua. Open up the AB360 LUA manager. Now, if you're using 1.0.0, you just need to do the decode part, but if you're on anything past that, you're going to need to do the decrypt part first. So, I'm going to show how to do that. So, choose loadlist.lua. Make an output for it. We'll call it loadlist.dec for decrypted. Let's go. And then we're going to also need to decode it. And we're going to call this loadlist.text. So now we have our nice readable loadlist file. I'm going to open it with Notepad, and we are going to import our sprite. You're going to want to scroll down until you get to the, um, where is it? You're going to get to the PC build section of things. And I'd go to, um, I think other would be okay. I mean, it's, all of them we're going to import, but this is more like for better organization. So I'm going uh, to just add it here. Example dat dot dat comma and save and now we need to go re-encrypt it in order to make it usable by angry birds so we're going to go to encrypt browse to loadlist.txt and then we're going to export to loadlist.lua okay so now it is being able to be recognized by the game now we are going to do the same with blocks way to actually you know import our individual stuff and so uh, the button, the buttons don't need block style anyway, but for like the birds and pigs and blocks, well, yeah, that goes in block style anyway. Okay, so we got to go to decrypt, choose block style anyway, blocks dot deck for decrypted, and then decode it, blocks dot deck dot anyway blocks.txt Okay, so now we have our blocks. We're going to open it. And uh, Notepad++ is perfect for this, by the way. But if you have a different uh, text editor, by all means, you're free to use it. It's not going to make a difference. Alright, so to import our bird, want to also to make it usable by the level editor, we need to go to, let me just scroll down for it. It's a very big file, so please excuse this. Okay, so we got groups right here. See, this is birds. So um, four, three indicates the buttons in the level editor you need to press to get to it. And so um, since if I'm gonna add mine, I gotta add one more. I'm going to change the last index to 10 because I plan on putting it at 10. And for our piglets, I'm going to change this to 7 since I plan on putting that last pig at 7. Okay, now I need to... Uh... Okay, I'm going to clone the red bird uh, because I think it's simple enough. You could clone other birds if you wanted to, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm choosing red. Okay, so first things first, I gotta change the group index, and I need to change it to 10. And now, 
I'm gonna call it uh, my bird. So all these uh, factors here, you can mess around with them, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're here to simply change the sprites. I'm gonna call this my bird. Man, 360 bird. Now, of course, if you're making it for a professional looking mod, you'd have different sprites for each, but I only have one. So don't think that you need to have them all the same name. Okay, that looks good enough. Though, I'd probably change the 10k, the 10k black, yes. Okay, okay. Now I'm going to, uh, hmm. Okay, bomb. Cause why not? <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, you can have all the sorts of fun in here, really. All right, to import our pig now, we gotta go to the pig section and we're gonna copy some example code for a pig. Since uh, the, my blue pig looks pretty close to king pig, uh, it only makes sense to use him as a base plate. So, blue pig let I'm gonna call him that. And uh, call it, I'm gonna call it blue pig. Pig, blue pig. Blue pig, blue pig, blue pig, blue pig, blue pig, blue pig, blue pig. Okay, so now we have our pig here. I also got to change the group index to seven. Now our pig is ready to be used. And finally, I'm going to import that block. Okay, and the... Uh, I'm probably going to give it a bit more toughness since, it, I mean, the Mario blocks have a bit of uh, strength to them. So let's go copy a stone block. Now, actually, I did not check which, uh, how many groups there are. It's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, okay. So this will be number thirteen. I'm calling it thirteen. Stone block, thirteen. And uh, this will be our question block. Question block, question block, question block, and question block. And group 13. Now, also that means I'll have to go back and add it to the, add more to the group index count. Otherwise we will not be able to load it. So, yeah, that's probably the one time-consuming thing of this is, yeah, I've got to go back and find it. Okay, rock blocks, last index, 13. Okay, great. Now, it's simply just overwrite blocks.txt with our new one. So we're going to go to encrypt, which is our blocks.txt, and we're going to overwrite blocks.lua. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to need to enable the level editor, and I do have a script for that. Okay, so we are in, and as you can see, uh, we got our custom play button, click me, and it does still work. Okay, so now we're going to check out our custom stuff. Okay, we're in the level editor, and as we can see, uh, yeah, there's my bird as we imported him. Uh, I'm going to set the start to one, and then I'm going to import the custom pig. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. And for blocks, let me go find my stone block. Uh, I kind of forget. Oh, which one? This is browse the stone. Oh, here, here we go. All right, nice. Put our block here, and I'll put our pig right here. Nice, nice. And uh, okay, better change you to two, four, and five. Nice. I'm gonna save it with Control S. And now we when we go back to our levels action. We uh, we need to encrypt it. As you can see, it is still raw. So we got to go back to our, oh right, we need to also add file name equals level one 
not LUA, or whatever the LUA file is called. In this case, it's called level1.LUA, so that's what we're calling it. And we got to encrypt it. And level1.enc. And we need to fully replace the thing. Now, let's play. Alright, isn't this exciting? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, that was so fun. Uh, or, yeah, I'm making this an exaggeration. But you see, isn't that cool? Let's do that again. <laughs> it just disappears. <laughs> Alright, so that's basically how you can import uh, custom objects into the game using the Angry Birds AB360 Sprite Dot Generator. I hope you found this tutorial useful, and if you did use this tutorial uh, to help you, I'd like to see the mods you've created with it, because I always enjoy these new submissions to showcase on Founder Files with the world. So, don't hesitate to send your submission soon. <laughs> Anyways, this has been XSXMan360, that is all, and thank you for watching.